The Gospel Which I Preach, Why Paul? Part 5 We ended our last study with Paul having bookend his recitation of the history of how his message and apostleship to the Gentiles was given by the risen and glorified Lord Jesus Christ with two statements. One, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 verses 11 to 12 And to now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Galatians 1 verse 20 Let's dig into this a bit more. These bookend statements above apply to Paul's repeated claim that the gospel which he preached did not come from an earthly source. Example, no man told it to him or explained it, certainly not the twelve, indicate his gospel to be different. We'll find out just how great are the things that differ between Paul's gospel and that preached by the twelve and their little flock. As we go forward but suffice it to say that Paul claims his gospel to be new revelation from the risen Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, and there has been a collision between Paul's gospel, the mystery gospel of the grace of God, and Peter's gospel, the gospel of the kingdom and its associated new covenant. As we've already mentioned in previous study, the first such collision between the kingdom gospel preached by the twelve in Jerusalem and Judea and the grace gospel preached by Paul. At the Antioch resulted in what is known as the Jerusalem Council discussed in Acts 15. Paul had gone to Jerusalem and visited with Peter, three years after his salvation by grace on the road to Damascus and receiving his Gentile commission from the risen Lord. It should here be pointed out that Peter was the leader of the twelve whom Christ appointed and gave loosing and binding authority. In Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19, some 14 years later Paul again meets with Peter and other Jerusalem kingdom church leaders due to the problem cited in Acts 15 verse 1 where certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. And Paul's commentary in regard to the addressing of this problem was, then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run in vain. Galatians 2 verses 1 to 2 What does Paul mean went up by revelation? Well simply it means that Christ revealed to him that he needed to go. Paul and Barnabas were known to the Jerusalem church leaders, both being Jews, but Titus is not. As it turns out, Titus is a grace gospel saved believer who is an uncircumcised Gentile, intentionally brought along by Paul to aid in making his point. More about that in future study. In other words, Paul wasn't called up by the twelve to somehow receive instruction, as some commentaries seem to indicate. Rather, by the revealed will of Christ, he went up to communicate to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. The student of the word will at this point have yet another why. Why would the apostles in Jerusalem need to have the gospel that Christ instructed Paul to preach explained to them? Weren't they all preaching the same thing? And the answer, given the cited problem both in this previous occurrence at Antioch and the instance here in the Galatian region, and given the revelation of Christ that Paul should go straighten things out, apparently not. And this is quite a game changer to realize and understand. So delicate was this situation that Paul even shared his instruction from Christ with the twelve, privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run in vain. We'll ask more questions and hopefully answer a few when we next continue with our session addressing why Paul. Thank <laughs> you.